Welcome to church. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad and happy. I'm Cameron Fontana. <laughs> and I'm Katie Fontana. We're so glad you could join us online. You could hear. I'm actually watching online on my phone. That's this is right. how we get the comments from people <laughs> watching. And speaking of, it's one of our favorite ways we love to connect with you every Sunday morning in service. If you haven't done so already, let us know first from where you're watching what you're believing God to do in this service and make sure you click that share button. That's right. Yeah. There's no easier way to evangelize than just sharing right there on your social accounts. Click that little button and thousands and thousands of people will get to see the Word of God and feel His presence. Right, and it's not just here in Columbus where we're sharing the Word of God. You're watching from around the world. Esosa is watching from Amsterdam. Lisa said aloha and mahalo. I think Lisa's watching from Hawaii. Today. Possibly. That's great. That Who be. else do we have? Let's see. Oh my gosh, there's so many names. Lucas, Bonnie. Oh my gosh. Um, who else? Lisa, yep, yeah. is in the Hawaiian Islands. Uh -huh. Peggy, I just saw Peggy's watching. Crystal's watching from Toronto, Canada. David, David yeah. from North Carolina. There you go. So <laughs> keep those comments coming. Again, we have Dream Team members on standby to agree in prayer with you for whatever your need is, so make sure you stay engaged all service long. That's yeah. right, and you know, Cameron said, you know, it's a super Sunday. Super. It's super Sunday here at World Harvest, so it yeah. is going to be an amazing day. We've got a special guest joining us today. Yeah. The presence of the Lord is already here, so you don't wanna miss one single moment. And there's a lot going on in Kid Harvest as well, so make That's sure right. if you're in the Columbus area, you still got time, don't speed on the way to church, but you still got time to get into the building. <laughs> and it's not just today that we're hearing the word of God, but every day every. we're going through our pastor's brand new devotional, Crown Him King. It's yes. still available. You got plenty of time to catch up. This right here, a devotional for every single day of the year, only $20. $20. Where can people get this? What an amazing deal. You can yep. get it at WHC. Dot life. That is how you can get that. But also you can get all of your announcements yep. and any information on the church and all the things that we are doing all of the time will be right there. And we're so excited again for this Super Sunday. We're believing for so many people to hear the word of God today and make that decision to make Jesus the king. And that's actually that's right. the Lord the king is the name of God, <laughs> Jehovah Hamelech, in this month. So make that's sure you right. get that devotional. A couple more comments from people watching, because again, Pete's mm. watching from Bakersfield, California. Right. SoCal friend right there. Who else do we got? Let's see, Bonnie Weaver again. I see that. Princeton is somewhere in Ohio watching. Let's see, Michael in Indiana. It's good to see you. Good to see all of you. Again, Deborah's watching, Era's watching, Bonnie, Pete, Mark, John, thank you all for engaging with us. We're gonna get out of the way because right. we have a big Super Sunday plan for you, which right. means service, service will begin, begin in 90, 90 seconds. seconds. World Harvest Church. Welcome everyone, everyone online and social media. Elkhart, good morning to every City Harvest Network campus and right here in Columbus in this room. Welcome to World Harvest Church. We're so glad that you're here with us today to worship our King. Make yourself at home. The words are going to be on the screen as we worship, so sing along with us. 
hey, we've got amazing ministry for your children today. So if you're here in this tabernacle and you've got kiddos, we strongly encourage you, go through those doors and we've got volunteers that will help you get your children checked in so they don't miss the amazing ministry out there while you enjoy it in here, okay? Well, we've got our family back with us this Sunday morning. Please help us welcome the one and only Miss Shana Wilson Williams. Good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody want them to fill the room this morning? Come on, somebody say, fill the room. Come on, fill this room. Everybody clap. Everybody clap. Come on, come on. That's it. It feels so good to be back home. We want you to fill the room this morning. We thank you for your presence, God. There is a sound, a sound from heaven that changes everything. I am free, no fear is holding me, nothing can stop my praise. Oh, 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 we were made for freedom, Jesus has redeemed us, my friend, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 sing it out together, freedom reigns forever and ever, let freedom feel the world. We wanted to fill this room. Let freedom fill the room.
anointing moving all the way in the back. Now, World Harvest, we know how to make a sound in the room. I need you to clap your hands like this. There's a sound of victory. There's a sound of joy. There's a sound of the breaking. And we feel your anointing. We feel the change. to be pregnant at that time we were believing God but we had given up and I will never forget Apostle Pastor Rob Parsley saying we are decreeing and declaring over your bodies and your wounds to be open anybody remember that and I looked at my husband and I touched my body and I said bless my children and lo and behold four months later we were pregnant with legacy she's on the front row tell your neighbor it's about to break out after five years, we were believing God for a baby and it never happened. But here it is, she's right there praising God. But that's not the greatest testimony. Last year when we were at Dominion Camp in July, I was pregnant and did not know it. I was 22 weeks pregnant. And here we are with Titan on the front row. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. You are pregnant and don't even know it. But it's about to break out. It's about to break out for you. What you've been believing God for is in your belly, it's in your mouth, and all you gotta do is speak it. I release billions in my family. I need you to speak that thing. 
bury out with two more children in three years. We didn't know what God had set up, but all it takes is for you to step in and say, God, I believe, I believe the report of the Lord. Whose report shall you believe? Tell your neighbor, I believe the report of the Lord. Somebody ought to just step in and step in in one second. Step in your miracle. There it go, church. Step in your breakthrough. Step in your power. Step in it. some fire brewing here. It's just like fire, 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 come on. Go ahead, sis. This is fertile ground. Woo, can we lift up our hands all over the room? Thank you, Jesus, for your glory this morning. Yes, Lord. We need the King of glory to fill this place. Woo. Come on, lift up your voice all on this room. Woo, let it fill you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right now. Why would we? Just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. King of glory, feel 
just want to be with you. Yes, the world. Yes, the world. Will bow down and say you are God. Every man. Every man. Bow down and say. Bow down and say you are King. So let's start. So Oh. 
the glory of your presence. Come on, say, we your people give you reverence. And now we'll rise, so Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can someone thank Miss Shana Wilson Williams and Harvest Music Live, part of our family? And that's a word right there. You're pregnant and you don't even know it. Even though you might not see it, God is working. Amen? amen. I saw a couple husbands look at their wives and go, whoa, 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 whoa. But amen. We're so glad you could join us. You may be seated. Welcome to World Harvest Church on not just this Sunday, Katie. Super Sunday. Super Sunday. That's Somebody right. say Super Sunday. Super Sunday. Not like a bowl of soup or Sunday. Super Sunday above and beyond. We're so glad you could join us and watching online. I'm Cameron Fontana. And I'm Katie Fontana. And we want you to know <laughs> that today you are part of your family from now and forever. So if this right. is your first time or the first time in a long time, what are you today? You are our VIP. Ooh, someone go, ooh. You're a VIP today. Then after that, you're part of the family. So we want to connect with you. We got so many things going on, so many ministries. All you have to do is click the link if you're watching online or if you're here, there's a little pocket in the seat in front of you. Everyone go, now grab one. There's a connect card right there. Fill out your information very quickly. You're gonna stick it in the container later on in service. And also let us know how you heard about the Harv. Yeah. We love hearing the testimonies. Someone told me about it at a gas station. My coworker told me someone paid for my Starbucks. Well, that was $30, but yes, so many ways, <laughs> let us know. That's right, but we also want to connect with you out in the foyer. So after service today, go to any of the foyers out there. You will see a table that says new here. And one of our amazing dream team members will connect with you. We have a very special gift from our first family. We want to put in your hands because there is nothing better than having the word in your hands Amen. and something tangible, right? Something tangible. Something tangible. Well, like we said, today is Super Sunday. We still got a lot of service to get to from our pastor, but we got right. some cool things going on right Right after service in the foyer so you can meet more people and hang out we got treats for you that's right we have special guests for your kids from Arendelle does anyone know where Arendelle is I'll give you another clue Elsa <laughs> she, and like, Anna yeah. <laughs> anybody else oh, oh, no parents no know who, frozen fans. how about What's let that? it go let okay. even not the non parents are like I know that song Elsa and Anna are gonna be here for that's your kids right. We also have blizzard kits, because how many know this week we celebrated the second fake spring of winter here in Ohio. Yes. But we want to give you kits, that way when that inevitable snow day does come, you can have some fun with your kids and your family and your parents and enjoy that this winter. That's right. Not only do we have things going on after church, but right now over in Kid Harvest, we have all kinds of things going on. We started our brand new series, The Journey Begins, X marks the spot where children will learn that where their treasure is, 
There their heart will be also. Preach. I know, listen, they are, they're learning it today. We've got a balloon drop challenge. It's actually a scripture challenge where they have to race against the clock to put the scripture together and figure out what it is. We've got hamster ball races. We've got all kinds of different things going on. So there's still just two minutes left. If your kid's in here, listen, go sign them up. Miss Shirley's gonna be mad, but it's fine. I'm not. Go sign them up so they don't miss out on anything because today we kick off a brand new session of our attendance awards. What's the attendance awards? So our attendance awards today, we will be recognizing all of the children that had perfect attendance during January what? in Kid Harvest. So they will be receiving a very special pin to go on their lanyard. Yes. Listen, these kids are excited about it. If your kid isn't involved in the pin trading yet, it's because they're not here enough. So get them in church. So not only do they get their pin today, but they also get to pick a very special prize from our treasure chest, either a Squishmallow. Listen, if you have kids, you know what a Squishmallow is. It's the Elmo of 2024. It, Remember when Tickle like, Me Elmo came out? No one could get it. But yes, Squishmallows. Or they can have butter slime. So the kids will get to pick their special prize for perfect attendance. And again, if your kid missed it this time, today kicks off a brand new session so they can be involved in the next one. And we also do this because when your kids take home the Squishmallows and the non-sticky butter slime, parents, it's you know what I'm sticky. talking about, yeah. and their friends hear about it, what an opportunity for your kids to say, hey, you could win these two at church, then we're yes. teaching them scripture with balloon pops. Yes. It's amazing. So it's the tools we use to get your kids, because how many know kids are the vision right now and right. Forever. forever, amen? Amen. And it's all thanks to Kid Harvest, Miss Katie, and yes. all the volunteers. All so volunteers. can we give them a round of applause? Woo, that's right. So make sure that you get your kids over there. They don't want to miss anything. But you can find all of these announcements and more information about everything going on here at the Harv at WHC. Dot life and if you're watching online don't go anywhere because i'm gonna come join you and i have a few more things to share with you everyone say adios katie adios we love our kid harvest volunteers now listen if you're in this room again whc.life has tons of information we got big events coming up this year and we'll post it there and on social media as well in the meantime we're going to do some church aerobics this morning everyone up on your feet don't worry, no jumping jacks involved. Unless, listen, if you're in the spirit, go for it. But we want to put two minutes on the clock. We want you to find someone around you that you haven't seen for a while or that you don't even know. Introduce yourself, say hi, and ask them, what's your favorite part about winter? There's an icebreaker for you, pun intended. Start the clock, go! Hello online. Oh my goodness. Sorry, I had to run over here to make sure I could join you. Listen, we are so excited that you have decided to join us today. As we were sharing just a few minutes ago, there are always so many things going on here at World Harvest Church. We want to make sure that we connect with you. So make sure all service long you are typing in there, liking, you're commenting, you're sharing the word because there's no easier way to share the gospel than right there through that screen. Okay, so make sure you click that share button. But also make sure that you are just typing in here where you're watching from, what you're believing for. We also want to see some testimonies because God is always moving and always doing crazy things. And we want to hear all about it. Just like, let's see, who's watching right now? Lucas, you are watching. Hello. Oh, he said Frozen. You were excited about that, us having Frozen here today. Super excited. Let's see. Johnny is watching as well. Joyce. We've got Kay. Lisa, hello, Lisa. She said, hallelujah, amen. Listen, there are all kinds of things going on in this world, but there's no better way than to just turn all of that off, than to click on your screen right there, get the word in you, get the word in your home or in your car, wherever you are watching from. This is the easiest way to set the atmosphere, change what's happening around you by setting the atmosphere right with the presence of the Lord. And there's no easier way than joining us each and every single service, okay? Let's see. We've got Janet Thompson watching. She said, dance like crazy. <laughs> she said, Think and dance like David danced. Yes and amen. Listen, if you're in your living room and you want to see God move, move that coffee table out of the way and just do a crazy, crazy dance for the Lord because there's going to be amazing things. But we love you guys and we will see you next time. Stay tuned. Good.
Good morning, World Harvest Church. As you make your way back to your seat, I dare you to just go ahead and praise the Lord on your way back to your seat, praising that you are alive and well. Praise Him for every blessing He's ever bestowed upon you. Praise Him for His goodness on this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. I am Bishop David Amos. I'm honored to serve as the ambassador of the great City Harvest Network. And if you ask yourself, well, what is City Harvest Network? Well, let me tell you quickly, that is a group of remnant, relevant revivalists, 2,616 preachers that are in covenant with Dr. Rob Parsley to preserve the purity of the gospel all around the world. That's 2,616 preachers that believe along with our pastor that God is generational, that what God did in one generation, he's desperate to do in another generation. I wish you'd shout that you're in world Harvest Church on this Sunday morning and from this spot we are reaching the world. Hey, it's so good to be here. Look over at your neighbor say, neighbor, it's so good to be here. It's so good to see you. And glory to God. You know, you can try and be seated, but you know just during the last 24 hours have we have been praying and responding to the call of prayer of our pastor, I have simply been reminded of the quality of people that make up World Harvest Church. And during the 24 hours of prayer, I was, I was moved with tears as I watched, I watched a man come in, one of our ushers, with three of his children. And I watched them circle this entire tabernacle, praying for every seat, praying for every family. I, I heard the tears and I saw the cries of a remnant group of people that are crying out in desperation for God to tabernacle right here in Columbus, Ohio. And I, I'm just so thankful to be home this morning in Columbus at World Harvest Church. You know, when you think of everything that happens here at World Harvest Church, you can't help but to be thankful just to be in this atmosphere. I mean, when you think of things like Harvest Preparatory School, from pre-K all the way to 12th grade, nearly a thousand students right here you can't help but to say it's good to be in the presence of the Lord and God's people. When I think of my daughter, which is a student at Harvest Preparatory School, when I think of my daughter that comes home talking about Bible verses and Jesus instead of confusion of the culture, I can't help but to say I am thankful to be at World Harvest Church on a Sunday morning. When you think of Valor Christian College and all of the students that are here and 23 cohorts across the nation that are working on their fully accredited bachelor degree because education is one of two ways that our pastor teaches that we're going to rescue a generation. You can't help but to say it's good to be in the house of the Lord on this Sunday morning. The glory to God. When you think of the ministries like Breakthrough Television, where we are literally reaching the entire world. You can't help but to say it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I, I remember as a young boy, when both of my parents were battling with addiction, when both of them were abusive, and I made a decision at 14 years old that I was going to end my life, but then I heard a sound coming from Columbus, Ohio. I heard a fiery preacher talking about the goodness of God and the hope there is for the hopeless, and I can't help but to thank God for that ministry, and in November, we just added eight and a half million more homes right here in the United States of America. I'm sorry, excuse me when I praise him that I'm at World Harvest Church on a Sunday morning. Hey! Glory to God. When you look around the room and you see people like our Russian harvest pastors that have partnered with us to do such great work in Ukraine and just returned last night from Washington, D.C. at the Ukraine summit. You can't help but to say, thank the Lord for all that is happening here at World Harvest Church. 
oh, but there's more. I mean, when you think of Bridge of Hope and 36 million meals that have been delivered, 36 million that you and I together in agreement have done, which includes 150,000 meals just last year in the Horn of Africa. When you look around and you see the volunteers that we have here for the Women's Clinic of Columbus and you think of all those mothers that get to hear the sound of the heartbeat at no cost and you think of 15,000 babies and more that have been saved, you can't help but to say, surely it's good to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. I mean, I could go on and on about why I'm just so thankful to be at World Harvest Church this morning. You think of the beautiful campus right there in Elkhart, Indiana, that is worshiping with us right now in agreement, is shouting and dancing. You can't help but to praise him, praise him, praise him. You think of, you be seated. i just praising him for a moment. When you think of our outreach teams every single week, that are going into your neighborhoods and my neighborhood and they're going into the inner city every week to preach the gospel you can't help but to say it's good to be at world harvest church on a sunday morning you can't even walk through the hallways of this place without hearing testimonies of how God is transforming people's lives. I was with Carolyn this morning that sings in our choir, and she told me the story of a young man that's been attending our church that was homeless and bound by addiction, but he's been absolutely free for the last three weeks because God touched him in this place. And just this week, a family member reached out and gave him an RV. He's no longer homeless. God has supplied his need. It's good to be in World Harvest Church on a Sunday morning when you think about all that God and God's people are doing together. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Ah. I said all that to say this, that we are an apostolic church. We're an organic church. We are our pastor teaching us we are orthodoxy, meaning that we know what we believe and why we believe. And our pastor has taught us that we believe that the main thing is the main thing. And the main thing is to love God and to love God's people. And we're determined to do it better than anybody else on the planet. We're thankful this morning as we get ready to take an offering of all that happens from this place. We're thankful that we are an apostolic church, organic church, orthodox, and that we know what we believe and why. Or you could say it like this, that we are like the original. We're thankful this morning that when our pastor gave birth to the many ministries that come from right here at World Harvest Church, that he did not look at the other models that were happening that he simply closed his eyes, got alone with God, got into the Word of God, saw what happened in the book of Acts and said, if I'm going to replicate something, I'm going to replicate that which is in the Word. Amen? And so it's just good to be where the book of Acts is being lived out. The Scripture says this about the organic, original church. In Acts chapter 2 it says, and all who believe, that's you and me, all who believed were together and had all things in common. It says they sold their property and goods and distributed them to all according to the needs. You see, the early church didn't give because of the promise of what they would receive when they gave. Although God will bless you when you give. They didn't give because there was a persuasive speech from somebody they gave because of what God had done for them and they were concerned, watch this, they were baptized with a concern of citizens instead of a criticism of citizens. And so they gave to meet the needs. Paul would say to Timothy, one generation to another, he said, instruct them in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 18 and 19. Instruct them to do good. Be rich in good words and be generous and ready to share. 
I know this morning there are so many of you that have come in anxious and ready to share that which God has given to you that we can continue to reach the world. Somebody say amen this morning. <laughs> Pastor Parsley has been blessed 50 years of ministry. It is a jubilee year, and during those 50 years, he's been blessed with the best type of givers. And Paul said, let each one of us give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. That includes every one of you that are watching online from all over the world today, that you are a cheerful giver. You are ready to give that the ministry of World Harvest Church will continue. Amen? Are you excited to give this morning? Well, give the Lord a shout. I'm going to put my hand in agreement with somebody else's, and we're going to continue to reach the world. Amen. You can get your offering ready, those of you writing a check or those of you that are doing texts to give. The instructions are on the screen. Those of you watching online, you know there's not a day that Pastor Parsley doesn't talk in meetings about how connected he feels to every one of you, how vital you are to that which we do all around the world. We love you so very, very much. Get your offering ready and let's pray. Father, we thank you. <laughs> we thank you that you are good and mighty and gracious. We thank you, Lord, that you said that you would bless those that give. We thank you that you said a generous person will prosper and whoever refreshes shall be refreshed. And so I pray in the name of your son Jesus for everyone giving in this campus and the campuses around the world and those watching online, God, that you would release a supernatural refreshing of the Holy Spirit as they give unto you. In the name of Jesus, our Christ, the Messiah, we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. You may serve the people. Anybody know he's worthy to be praised? Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Come on and clap those hands as we get. Sing hallelujah. 
praise and give them glory. Come on, Sopranos. Thank you so much to Harvest Music Live, the choir, and the incomparable Miss Shana Wilson Williams, international recording artist, worship leader, extraordinaire. So blessed to have her and her family with us. Richard and RJ and Majesty and Legacy and brand new little Titan. What a surprise. 
<laughs> God will do that, won't he? He will surprise you. He's in Ephesians 3.20, God. He'll do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask, think, believe, or perceive or conceive. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm not the parsley that, that you were expecting quite yet. Uh, I will have the honor to introduce our pastor, Dr. Rod Parsley, here in just a few moments. But I'm Ashton Parsley. Well, thank you. <laughs> I am the creative director here for our ministries at large, and I am the proud student pastor of Valor Christian College, the school of revival. And I just got to brag on these students a little bit. First of all, we are blessed to also have another family member with us this week, our City Harvest Network overseer and resident evangelist, Miss Deborah George, stand up. She has been out on the streets of our city all week long with our Valor students and our outreach team here. And you know, the Bible says that he who wins souls is wise. Do you, do you think, can you amen to that? He who wins souls is wise. And you know, here at World Harvest Church, we're all about the one. What's the one? The one soul that you know needs to encounter Jesus or they're on their way to hell otherwise. Your one, your coworker, your colleague, your friend, your loved one, your sister, your brother, mother, father. And that's what we believe that everything we do here is attached to. There's a soul attached to everything that we do. That is our ultimate goal. That is our highest calling as Christians, as believers, and as the church, as an organization and as a body of believers to win souls. So I'm extremely, extremely excited to announce that just this week, just this week, with Miss Deborah George and again our outreach teams in Valor Christian College on the streets of our city, we won 422 people to Jesus. 422 people that were lost and now they are found that were bound and now they are delivered and set free and on their way to heaven. We are depopulating hell every single day here at the Harv. And we're happy about it. We also got the opportunity to pray with over 470 people. Just go out and bless the community. How many of y'all know what the world needs now is love, sweet love? It's true. It's true. And so year to date, right, we're only in the second month of the year. I know January felt like it was 65 days long. We are, in fact, only in February. But year to date, since January 1st of 2024, this body of believers has already won 811 people, nearly 1,000 people to Jesus in our altars, in our schools out in the highways and the byways. Come on, it takes the average church in America one year and $100,000 worth of resources to win one soul. Pastor wants me to say it again. You're the one that taught me this, this statistic, Pastor. It takes the average church in America one year, 12 months, one year, and $100,000 worth of resources to win one soul. We just did the work of 811 churches in a little over a month. Hallelujah. So we're grateful for that. We're thankful for that. You may be seated again. We're thankful to Miss Deborah George. And also, uh, we, we believe in inviting people to church here. I, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. That's what Super Sunday is all about. It was bait. It was bait. Because, right, we just, it's our responsibility to get them in the boat and then the Holy Spirit will sort the fish, right? We know once we get you on the property, the Holy Spirit will take care of the rest. So we're so happy that you have chosen to worship with us today. And if you were, if you are here today, by way of someone inviting you, you ought to reach over or send a text and thank that person because God laid that on their heart. God laid that on their heart to invite you to a place where you can receive love and healing and peace and prosperity. Anything you need, it's right here in this house because God 
lives here. He resides here. And with him and in him, there's absolutely everything that you could ever want and anything that you could ever need. And we're believing for miracles today, for your need to be met and a special blessing on all of those that invited someone to come with you today. Thank you, thank you. I've seen a, a lot of familiar faces, a lot of faces I haven't seen in a long time. God is bringing them out the woodwork, right? This is not a post-COVID church. No, we're so thankful for online streaming and we love our online family, those of you that are just simply unable to make it here. But if you are able to make it here, I see families that drive two hours every week. I see families that come from Michigan every week, two times a week. We have Wednesday night service too. Imagine that. But we have so far this year invited person, and this is done by about 20 volunteers every Saturday, we go out into the community, into neighborhoods, and we hang door hangers. It's one of the most effective ways to invite people to church, other than word of mouth, of course. And already, that group of volunteers, you ought to consider being a part of it, have invited 18,938 individuals to church. I mean, this doesn't happen everywhere. Those people, here, here's, here's, a, here's another staggering stat for you. You can be seated. 70% of the people in America, men, women, children, 70% of the people in America will live and die having never been invited to church. Never, never, not once. 70% of the population in America, but not here, not here, right? Because we know that in order to fulfill the great command, which is love your neighbor as yourself, we have to also be actively participating in the great commission, which is what? Go, go into all the world and preach the gospel into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. So again, I just wanted to take a little time to brag on our church family and in particular, our Valor students. And I guess I, I guess I shouldn't have told you to be seated because we want to give honor where honor is due. If you're able to stand, we would love for you to stand all across the tabernacle. As I said earlier, I have the honor and privilege of introducing our pastor, the shepherd of this house. And I always say he's not just my biological father, but he is my spiritual father. And he's a spiritual father to so many. And I know that God has laid a very, very, very special word and message, a very on-time clarion call to you, to the church, to every believer and non-believer alike. And so let's open up our hearts and our spirits to receive that word. Would you welcome Dr. Rod Parsley to this platform? Wow. Wow. We already, we already had church, didn't we? I said, didn't we? Yeah. All right, you can be seated. I have to brag on a young man from Harvest Preparatory School. Uh, last night, and of course, the incomparable coach David Dennis, who this past year won his 400th varsity basketball game 400 wins and uh, they're they're pretty exceptional and I love these lifers you know the young man let me see his picture there he is that's uh last night uh coach Dennis on your right and some gray-bearded guy on the left but Adonis is right there in the middle. Now, Adonis is what you call a lifer. And uh, he started on the varsity squad four straight years, and he's a senior. And last night, his mama, you, don't, you may not see her unless you have children, because his mama volunteers every single Sunday of the world in Kid Harvest. So let's thank mama. <laughs> that trains them up right 
this is, this is very rarely ever accomplished, but Adonis last night scored his 1,000th point. 1,000 points in his high school career. Uh, so thankful, so thankful. Everybody look at somebody. If, folks always say, look at your neighbor. Well, you got a neighbor on either side. And if I'm the middle and you two look that way, nobody says anything to me. So find somebody and say, today we're coming home. Come on, this is going to be a great homecoming day. We're going home. John's gospel, please. Chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Words to this effect. The Lord Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Now, in order for that to happen, you got to turn off CNN, you got to turn off Fox News, you got to turn off your morning news feed, and you got to start with John 14. And John 14, Jesus said, Hey! Oh, look, I startled the students there. Jesus said, Let not your heart. Now, it's one thing for your mind to be troubled. It's one thing for your physical body to be nervous, but it's something entirely different for your heart to be troubled. And Jesus, the Christ said, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. If you do, shout amen. amen. Well, you know, 87% of all Americans believe in God. Even 50% believe what God said about heaven. But only 4% believe what God said about that other eternal destination. So it's not enough just to believe in God. Jesus goes on and says, hey, look it. You believe in God. Believe also in me. I am, as the apostle Peter said, the Christos. I am the embodiment of God. I am God with us. I am the I am that I am. You say, why is that important? Well, come to my orthodoxy class on Wednesday nights and you'll understand. It's important because less than 60% of so-called Bible-believing Christians believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. I'm talking about church-goers. I'm talking about people that go to church every Sunday. Do not have the biblical orthodoxy to understand because they have backslidden preachers who don't want to do anything but entertain. Start the sermon off low. Be rather doctoresque. Then build it up. Then bring in the organ. And tantalate your emotions. Which does nothing for you spiritually. Are you following me so far? Incidentally, this Wednesday night, I'm going to raise up a standard against uh, an internet epidemic of false teaching that is splitting churches, disrupting homes, and spewing false doctrine. I was personally trained for decades by the foremost acknowledged by spiritual people and secular people as the foremost knowledgeable person on the subject of exorcism. And so this Wednesday night, I'm gonna open a door to the truth and I'm gonna slam the door shut on the nonsense. You with me? Wednesday night, seven o'clock, be here. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring a message on 10 reasons why no Christian can have a demon. See how quiet it got? 
Nobody went to shout. You know why? Because you spend all your time on the internet listening to people you don't know anything about. You don't know what their background is. You don't know who their pastor is. You don't know who they're connected to. You don't know what kind of doctrinal falsehood they're spewing on you. But it's exciting. Well, God didn't call you to be excited. He called you to be passionate. Amen. So be here Wednesday night. So Jesus said, I'm trying to get through the text. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Don't stop there. Believe also in me, Jesus. For in my father's house are many mansions. One translation says dwelling places. Doesn't matter to me. If Jesus is there, that would be home to me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. In other words, Jesus is saying, I share with you in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John everything you need to do to go to heaven. It's all right there. It's something called the gospel. All right? I would, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Look at somebody and say, this isn't all there is. This life is like a vapor, seen then gone. It's like the flower that rises up in the morning and fades at noonday. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. At the top of your lungs, let America and the world know the Bible says Jesus is coming again. Shout now. Yeah. Or he's a liar. Because right there in red pages, red letters on white pages said, I will come again. And he's coming the same way he left. He was here, and then he wasn't. Whoop. There he went. And it's going to be, he's not here. Whoop. There he is. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And I can tell you this morning that I know exactly when he's coming. In the hour and moment that you don't think suddenly he will appear. Faster than the fleetest hoof ever struck a pavement or a wheel ever turned on an axle, he's coming. And when I come, I will receive you unto myself so that where I am there, you may be also. Shout, we're going home. We used to sing an old song. It went something like this. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith, we can see it afar. <sighs> For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. Now, you may not know that part, but surely you know this part. In the sweet, we will Go ahead, go ahead. Now, Elder Canfield, I did not hear you ringing now. Like I know you can. Now get up here. Come on, one good chorus of in the sweet by and by. Are you ready? Now, I wasn't raised in the Baptist church, sir. You know, sweet by and by, you Pentecostal sheep, you. Are you ready? I can see the words on the screen. In the sweet. Don't worry about the verse. In the sweet. In the sweet. You ready? In the sweet. Told you. Come on, by choir. And by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore 
in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore if i trust god that i in these 50 years of ministry have been anything I trust that someday they'll engrave on a stone somewhere, hopefully in eastern Kentucky, they'll engrave on a stone, here lies a gospel preacher. I got all kinds of other accolades, you know, that I really don't care anything about. What I care about is that I've spent these past 50 years of my life preaching, not doctrines, not the rules of men, not religion, the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, because the simplicity of the gospel is its power. And the power of the gospel is its simplicity. Mark chapter 1 verse 15. The time is fulfilled. Shout, we're going home. And the kingdom of God is at hand. It does not mean immediacy, but it does mean imminency. It is at hand. And here is the first message of Jesus, John the Baptist, Billy Graham, Billy Sunday, and Rod Parsley. Are you ready? Jesus said it first. This is his first sermon. Repent. Look what else he said. And believe the gospel. So the first word of the gospel is not live. The first word of the gospel is if you want to live, here's the pathway. Repent. And then Romans 2, 4 comes along and the apostle Paul says to all of the believers chagrin who frown when they hear the word repentance. Repentance means to turn from what harms you to what helps you. That's repentance. Paul said, it is the goodness, shout goodness, of God that leads to repentance. Now shall take us home, preacher. Harry Ironside, which is a person that every serious Bible student should know. There was a period of time where Dr. Ironside, who only went to the eighth grade, he went to the eighth grade and yet is one of the foremost theologians of three generations. He has, he's called doctor because he was given three different honorary doctorate degrees by major secular universities. Only went to the eighth grade. Little as much when God is in it. He's the former pastor of the great Moody Church in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, he was so acclaimed that he was asked to preach the funeral of Billy Sunday. This is a person we should listen to. What Dr. Ironside said is this, the gospel is not good advice to be followed but rather good news to be believed. I think you ought to shout right there. Now, we're going to go home. And when I think of home, home for me is Appalachia. Huh. We talk different there. Don't we, Blake? We speak a little different language there. If you would go there today, they would think you talk funny. And you would think they sure enough talk funny. Because we have different words than you have for things. Let me give you a little test. Uh, a holler. To you, 
that means to yell. To us, that's a place where you live. My daddy was born and lived in Groundhog Holler. Now you would call it a hollow, but we call it a holler. It's the space dead ending between three different mountains. That's a holler. So you always lived up the holler, not down the holler. Do you understand? We, uh, we had a buggy. Now, you would think that's something you ride in. But it's not something you ride. A buggy is a shopping cart. Nary. Some of you would think Nary is a name. But Nary is not a name. It means none. Like, nary one of you are acting like you enjoying my message. <laughs> nary one of you. Reckon. Reckon means suppose. I reckon y'all will now start enjoying my sermon. Plum. You think plum is something you eat. Plum means all the way. Y'all look plum beautiful. Please speak Appalachian around me. It will make me feel so much at home. Whether it's mountains ablaze with autumn's glory or a humble home perched on a hillside, those are the sights of my home. It may be the scent of freshly mown hay or it might be the scent of fatback frying in a black iron skillet. <laughs> those are the smells of home. I don't want no chipotle. Well, have me... Some fat back, if you please. It might be the hometown harmony of a fine southern gospel quartet. Or it might be the whine of a coal truck in low gear, struggling to make it up the mountainside. Those are what home sounds like to me. These are unmistakable. They are irreplaceable because they are the fabric of what makes me who I am. I've observed this homeward draw in the natural world. Outdoorsmen understand the great Canadian geese and how they orient themselves by the Earth's electromagnetic wave. A bird. You think they're just flying aimlessly. They have a built-in GPS. They are following electromagnetic waves hundreds of feet above the earth. And with their necks outstretched and their wings out thrust, they fly northward every single spring so that they can build their nests in the place of their nativity because there is no place like home. We watch the silver salmon swimming across the open sea and then turns at exactly the right moment and the right place, guided through the pathless ocean by impulses he does not even understand, but obeys and heads homeward to the stony brook of his birth because there's no place like home. Even the majestic horse can be broken of every bad habit with a bit and a bridle. But any good horseman knows you let loose on those reins and you give that horse his head and he's heading at a full gallop. You better hold on, cowboy, because he's headed back to his stall because there's no place, no place like home. 
You do remember little Dorothy, little red-headed Dorothy. We found that out after Color TV came out. <laughs> we thought she was gray-headed. <laughs> she was in black and white anyway. Little Dorothy, and we had to take their word for it that those were ruby red slippers that she clicked. With her little dog, Toto. We had to receive by faith. Or a white board cabin on a mountainside. Home is, well, home. The place where family welcomes you. The place where friends remember you, where there's protection from every adversary and there's provision for every need. Where there's healing for every hurt, where there's hope for every lost soul. Home, where you feel like somebody when you know you really ain't nobody. Now put on your traveling shoes this morning because mm. I can see the smoke rising from the chimney. I, I can see the front porch light shimmering through the pine trees. I can smell the honeysuckle on the vine. Don't you give up now. Don't you dare give up now we're almost home Dottie Rambo the greatest songwriter of Christianity penned these words there's a light in the window and the table spread in splendor and someone's standing by hear me hear me an open door I can see a crystal river, Lord. I must be near forever, and I've never, ever been this homesick before. See the bright light shine? It's just about home time. I can see my father standing at the door. This world's been a wilderness, but I'm headed for deliverance. Lord Jesus, I've never been this homesick before. I want to give you just a couple gospel truths. They'll lead you to King Jesus. And thereby they'll lead you to your eternal home. The first one's very simple. 1 John 4, 8. The shortest, most complete definition of God. God is Love. No, 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 no. Don't let a preacher add to it. God is love. He does not possess love like a gift. He can give you like you give your dog a treat. Unconditional. Means you can't do anything to deserve it. I would that Christians would remember that after they receive it. Here's what John said, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved, never in the history of the known universe, in the halls of academia or education, has so much truth been closed and condensed and distilled into that one little monosyllable. So, God so loved the world. That's the only description he gives until he finishes the verse. He so loved me that he gave his only begotten son. So that whosoever would simply believe. What does that mean? Trust. Trust in him would never perish. But have everlasting life. Shout, we're going home. The love of God, said the hymn writer, is greater far 
than tongue or pen could ever tell it goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell the wandering child is reconciled by God's beloved son the aching soul again made whole priceless pardon forever won O oh, love of God, how rich, how pure, how marvelous and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. When the greatest theologian of two generations was asked, what is the greatest revelation that you have ever received? He did not hesitate. He lifted his eyes and sang profoundly and prophetically and powerfully. This is it. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me in my brokenness and my wandering and my wondering. And when everything's gone wrong and nothing goes right, and when I mess it up and I turn around and mess it up again, Jesus loves me. This I know. Well, the Bible tells me so. Not only does he love you, but John 3.16 says God gave him to die for you. John 15.13 Greater love has no man. Don't, 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 don't confuse humanity is weak pathetic pitiful description of love for God's fidelity don't put God in human terms You think somebody loves you because they liked you on Facebook. You think somebody loves you because you drive him around in your car and let him put his hands on things that don't belong to him. He doesn't love you. I was in a hospital waiting room, emergency room. And there were these ladies sitting behind me, one of them waiting to go in and be seen. Her face, one eye swollen shut, lacerations on her face. And her friend was telling her, you have got this time to leave him before he kills you. And do you know what her response was? Oh, that man, he beats me because he loves me so much. He's so jealous. He's an animal. He's worse than an animal. That's not love. A paycheck is not love. Somebody to sleep with is not love. If it was, how come you're not still with him? You need to flush your understanding of love. And don't you ever mix that mess with God's unfailing, unadulterated, unconditional, unequivocal, won't ever leave you love. Greater love has no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friend. Whew. 
sir, ma'am, young person, there's no true Christianity without a cross. That angry, mean, biting beam is the hallmark of a life-giving gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the place where God's limitless provision intersects with our most basic need. Where the furious love of God, and it is furious, it will track you down. It will find you. It will take the garbage off of you. It will dig through your mess. It will get under all the stuff you don't want anybody else to see. It will peer into all the things you're afraid to tell anybody. And having found you there, he will reach into the muck and into the mire and into the defeat and the tragedy and the hurt and the woundedness and pull you out. Never before, never since has such love been on open display as it was there on Calvary's tree. Words would fail to describe it. The intellect comes up short to help you understand the impact your hard questions. His cross, that's the place where the unfaltering love of Jehovah God expressed through the supreme gift of his only begotten son nailed by tempered spikes into tortured flesh and into splintered wood. You say, how much does he love me? Watch him. They swung him high and they stretched him wide. So when you ask, how much does he really love me? He shows you this much. Thirdly, not only, not only does Jesus love you, not only did he die for you, but God, God, this is the apex of our hope in God. This is the crescendo of our faith in Jesus Christ. They put him in that tomb. And on the third day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the sepulcher with baskets full of spices to anoint his three-day dead body. But when they got there, he did not greet them. A great big archangel was sitting atop the stone. They peered inside. He was not there. They saw the clothes they'd wrapped him in for burial, folded, and laying beside the tomb. And the angels, the angels spoke. And he said, here it is again, fear not, for I know who you're looking for. Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. And then Joni's favorite verse in all the scriptures. He is not here. Buddha's still there. John F. Kennedy is still there. The esteemed Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is still there. But Jesus, 
His tomb is not conspicuous because of whose bones lay there. But rather, excuse me, I'm from Eastern Kentucky. His tomb is conspicuous because there ain't nobody there. He is risen as he said. If he said it, you can believe it. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. God raised him from the dead. Can I give you another one? He can change your life. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. I don't have a theory. I, I don't have somebody's sermon. It's real. It's real. Oh, I know it's real. I know he can change your life. Not because I've seen him instantly and forever changed, multiplied millions of lives. The greatest proof I have that Jesus can change your life is because he changed mine. I was eight years old. In a year, I'll be 68. Nearly 60 years old. And I can still smell that room. I can see the people. I can remember walking in the side door. I remember that the floor was half some old leftover concrete and half dirt. I can remember the lights because I thought it was awfully dark in there. There were cords strung across the ceiling and hanging down with a socket. They were gold colored and a light bulb screwed in. That was all. Didn't have a screen in the place. Didn't have any $10,000 light bulbs. Why, we certainly had no edifice like this. And to add insult to injury, we were Baptists. There were people in there, not many, 10 or 12. It was a Tuesday night. And they were talking in some kind of foreign language, doing this and stuff. One of them went to dancing. Now, I don't mean like y'all dance. I don't mean that. I mean, they were dancing like, you ever see those things when at a used car lot, they blow air up in them? That's it. That's the dance. And one lady, she'd go all the way backward and all the way forward. And there were posts in the middle of that little tiny room. And my witness to God, she would dance and throw her head and miss that thing by inches and spin around and never touch it. In the Holy Ghost. You say, well, what were Baptists doing at a Pentecostal church? It gets worse. They had a woman preaching. I had never seen such a thing. But my parents believed if it's in our neighborhood and they're having a revival meeting, I don't care if you got schoolwork tomorrow, get it done when you come home. Because at six o'clock, we're going to church. And 
and we went to church. I don't remember what that woman preached. I had the privilege of recognizing her in the midst of a Dominion camp meeting with 8,000 people here. Her name was Mabel Whipple. She was still preaching at that same little place. And I brought her over here and I put her on the front row. And I brought her up here. And I let people see the woman that preached to less than 20 people. And one person answered the altar call. And I was that boy, eight years old. I tugged on my mama's dress tail. Some of you don't remember that. Women used to use, wear dresses. And, you know, like dresses. And I was standing by my mama. And I reached over. And I took my mama by the tail of her dress. It was real close. It wasn't up to here. It, I could reach it. And I grabbed it. And I tugged on it. She looked at me with that, what you doing, boy? Because it's church. You ain't messing around in church. And with tears coming out of my cheeks, I said, Mom, I want to go to the altar. And she didn't say, well, no, I knew he's going to be a preacher. I'm eight. I got blue jeans on with the cuffs double rolled that thick. I didn't play with Barbie or Ken. I had a stick pony and some cap pistols and a big old collie dog what I was able to ride like a horse. Sister Gillicuddy grabbed one arm. Sister Yay Yay done shouted her bun off. She's saying, hold on. Sister Gillicuddy saying, let go. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And they prayed with me. And in those days, you didn't just come check a box. You had to stand there. And you had to tell everybody what happened to you. And so they said, how do you feel? I said, this is the only way I know to describe it. Now my mama, she didn't believe in wasting money. I had a dream about her two nights ago. I woke up, prayed, went back to bed. Had another dream, exactly the same, only it was my father. Both of them were standing on the other side of an open door, and they were asking me to come with them. And I said, I can't yet. I can't yet. He brought me back from the dead for a reason. But one day, I'm coming home. One day. My mama didn't believe in wasting money. She worked two jobs. My daddy worked two jobs my whole life. We never missed church. We never missed breakfast at the breakfast table and dinner at the dinner table. You say that's impossible. I'll have to disagree. I lived that way my whole life. He said, how do you feel? My mom didn't buy dial or dove. She made her soap, live soap. Some of you are like, what? It was kind of rough, had chunks in it. Sometimes they scrape you. But it was so strong, she knew it'd get a 
cowboy playing eight-year-old clean. She dunked me down in that tub and scrubbed me. Woo! It'd get you clean, take the first three layers of your eight layers of skin off. But you come out clean, wouldn't you, Deborah? I said, you come out clean. And I said, y'all, I was eight years old. Everybody staring at me. I said, the only way to know, I know to tell you how I feel is this. I felt so dirty inside. I'd done a lot of sin and I was eight. It's not about the sins you've committed. You're not a sinner because you sin. You sin because you're a sinner. And I said, all I know to tell you is I feel clean on the inside. Like my insides have been scrubbed by mama with that lye soap. And I've tried to be clean ever since. I love Jesus today more than tongue of pin could ever tell. And if he's not real to you, he's more real to me right now. God brought me back for this morning. Because somebody is making the wrong choice. But you don't have to. People say silly little things like, I'd never serve a God that would send people to hell. Well, good, then let me offer you Jesus. Because he's never sent anybody to hell. Hell was not made for human persons. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. You want to know God's plan for you? It's in Revelation. The book said, he's going to wipe all tears from their eyes. He said... There won't be any more pain forever. There won't be any more death. Can you imagine? There won't be any sorrow. There won't be any crying. And for those who enter the gates of heaven, Here's what they'll hear. Well done. God, with Jesus at his right hand, will say to you, well done. I'm a baby boomer. Our daddies fought in two wars to preserve the freedom of this nation. And they weren't big on words like I love you. Or I'm proud of you. My daddy told me two times in my life he was proud of me. Two times. When I enter the gates of that city, I'll hear him say, Well done. When I get home, I won't have to visit hospitals anymore. I won't have to preach with caskets laying in front of me anymore. I won't have to hold the hand of people like the precious Barb Bender. When her husband preached in this pulpit, kissed his wife on the front row, got on his motorcycle to head home and never made it. I had to sit there and tell her, he's gone. Don't you dare blame hell on God. 
God made heaven for you. And heaven for your children. Heaven for your spouse. Where he'll say, well done. And there won't be any more funerals and no more hospitals and no more needles and no more opioids and no more death. That's the Jesus I serve. Everybody's standing, no one moving around. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm coming home. Jesus, I wandered far away from God, but today I'm coming home. And there aren't enough devils of hell or people of earth that could ever make me doubt that I'm as sure for heaven as if I was already there. I know that I know that I know. But there are many, many right now who may be receiving your last opportunity. Jesus loves you. Think of this flesh ripped off of his back, hanging around his knees like ribbons. He did that for you. So you'd never know what hell looks like. He made heaven for you. But he won't make you go there. God so value, you wanna talk about freedom? God so values our personal freedom that he gives us the opportunity to choose. Choose this day, Jesus said, life or death. It's up to you. Heaven or hell, blessing or cursing. You choose. Wow. Wow. I'm not a Christian because I was born one. I'm a Christian because I was born again one. And God gave me a new life, a new lease on life, a new purpose, a new hope, a new joy, a new peace. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Reverence to the Holy Spirit. I've got 30 seconds. The number one statement in hell is, I never intended to be here. The number one song is, I did it my way. How's that working out? How's that working out? Jesus, we want to come home. I just heard him say, well, I told you this is the year when the doors open. Tell them to come on in. No judgment. No ridicule. Just open arms of love and reception. He's waiting for you right now. The doors open. This time tomorrow I may be in heaven and you may not be. I, I pray that's not the case, but it's appointed to man one time to die and after that the judgment and unfortunately the death rate among human persons remains stubbornly at 100 percent i don't know when the next covid-esque tragedy is coming i don't know when they'll start bombing america the way they're bombing our troops i don't know when the nation will rip itself apart through hatred. I, I don't know. I don't know what your tomorrow holds. I keep a set of my son's clothes who had a light for a crosswalk and walked out into the crosswalk and got run over by a city bus. Had to cut his clothes off. But God spared him one night in the hospital and back home. 
I don't know what awaits you. And I know I'm tarrying a moment. I'd walk to the city hall and back on jagged glass if I thought I could spare you hell. Don't go there. Accept Jesus. He loves you so much. Accept him now. I'm going to count to three. When I say three, that's it. You shoot that hand up in the air, and we're going to pray, and God's going to do exactly what we asked him to do. This entire congregation should be resounding with prayer. I can't hear you. Stop whispering. Pray. Stop whispering. Pray. Somebody is going to hell and your prayers have to stop them. We've been praying the last 24 hours for you and this is it. It's come down to this. Heaven or hell, life or death, God or the devil, this is it. On three, shoot that hand up. Let's pray and make sure that Jesus is your Savior and you're on your way to heaven. If you don't know that, you should know it and you can know it before you leave this building. I've got to count. Hands are already going up. Do it now. One, two, three. Raise that hand. Leave it up. Leave it up. Don't put it down. Don't put it down. Every person with your hand raised, get out into the nearest aisle and come right here and we're going to pray. Come on. You can't do it in your seat. Come on. Christians, make sure everybody around you is ready to go to heaven. Ask them. They won't lie to you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Down every aisle, they're coming. What about you? Oh, I'll be okay. I'll just whisper a prayer right now. No, sir. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. But if you'll confess me publicly, I'll confess you. They're still coming. What about you? We're going to sing. We're going to give you the opportunity. I don't see anybody talking to anybody. I'm tired of Come on. And Come on. Lord. And now I'm Come on. Come on. This is it. Come on. There they're still coming. There they're still coming. Is everybody on your road ready to go to heaven? Ask them. They won't lie to you. Crowds are intimidating in church, but not at a football game. Come on. Come on. Jesus went all the way to Calvary for you. Come on. Come on. Here come three. There come two. Come on. Come on. This time tomorrow may be too late. Here come two more. Come on. Come on, help him, Diana. God bless you. God bless you. God, this is your day. This is your day. This is it. Hallelujah. Come on. You take that first step. Jesus is going to wrap his arms around you and walk all the way with you. Come on. Somebody clap. Somebody shout. Come on, this is it. This is it. I don't even remember the last time I've done this. And if I'm offending you, sorry, not sorry. I want you to bow your heads again. God is in this room. He's doing everything he can. Everything he can.
How long are you going to wait? Do you know the greatest sin recorded in the Bible? It's the sin of presumption. What does that mean? That you would presume that you don't have to come when Jesus calls. There are some sins for which the blood of Jesus is not a remedy. Only two. The first is the sin of blasphemy. I'm not even going to tell you what it is because you haven't committed it. But I will tell you this one. And there are millions in hell. place where the worm dies not people don't die and God will have to give you a new body so you can endure the torment forever now that's the reality and people go there because they squandered the day that God called them there are people in your Bible that spent the rest of their lives asking for God to call them. And they died without salvation. That's presuming that God will give you another opportunity. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you have trouble standing with your eyes closed, grab the chair in front of you. I have paused for this moment, for you. We're going to play this song one more time. And when it's over, I'm going to pray. Make sure, be very, very sure that you don't go to hell for somebody else. What might they think? What might they do? Well, that would change this circumstance. Well, good. You want to go to hell for that? Come on. Wise up. This is your moment. This is it. I saw my gone to heaven parents on the other side of a door asking me to come with them. I don't know how many more altar calls I've got. I'm going to give you this opportunity. Some of you knew God. You were on fire for God. But you're cold and you're distant. You can't just come back to church. You have to come back to Jesus. And you have to come back the same way you came the first time. Now I'm going to give you that opportunity because God loves you. This is it. We're going to sing and the altar is open. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. God didn't have me wait for nobody. There come three. What about you? Come on. Two more. There comes another one. There come two more. Somebody clap and shout and forget what time it is for a minute. Somebody pray. Somebody intercede. Are you coming? Come on. Come on. Here come two more. Three more. Are you coming? Another one. Here come two more back here. Come on. If you pray, I said bind and loose. Break the stronghold of deception and lies. Do it now. Come on. Come on, backsliders. Come on. Come on. Get it right. You want the fire of God back, the peace of God back, the blessing of God back? Come on. Come on, this is it. 60 seconds and we're going to pray. 60 seconds. We're going to pray. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. Are you ready? 
Let's give God a great big hallelujah for rescuing and redeeming. Thank you for being in the altar. Miss Deborah, I don't know where all the altar workers are, but thank you for being there, Deborah. Hallelujah. Are we ready to pray? You ready? You say, what do I have to give up to be a Christian? Everything that wants to kill you. What do I receive? Everything that wants to give you life and joy and peace and happiness. So let's pray. It's not fancy. Just mean it from your heart. You ready? And I mean everybody in this building. I want to lose some ceiling tiles from the reverberation of your voice. You ready? Heavenly Father. I believe believe. you gave Jesus Jesus. your only son son. to die in my place. place. I believe you love me. You You died for me. me. God raised you from the dead. dead. And you can change my life. So here it is, Jesus. Here's my life. life. All of it. The The good and the bad. The The ugly. Here it is. I believe you can make me over again. You can give me a start today. A makeover. A new life. Here I am. Come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Wash me in your blood. Give me eternal life. Satan, self, I renounce you. You're not in control. Lord Jesus Christ, I accept you, I believe in you, and I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. I will live for you as you show me how, and it feels so good to be forgiven, I could just clap and shout out loud. Well done, World Harvest Church. Well done. Thank you for all the invitations and all the prayers and all the support that made this day possible. I love every one of you. Thank you so much. There are folks standing around you. They've got a little, I don't know what that's called, a little clipboard. They're going to take down your information because I want to be sure that we cover you in prayer. Amen? Amen. And Wednesday night, we have church at 7 o'clock. Make the devil mad that he had to let you go and be back here 7 o'clock Wednesday night. Everybody listen to me for a minute. Everybody listen to me for a minute. Everybody listen to me for a minute. Next Sunday morning is Baptism Sunday. Jesus said, if you accept him, what you have done, you need to be baptized in water. And we can share that with you. It's the most glorious thing you will ever experience. And the folks that are working with you right now can share that with you. And we will see you in water baptism next Sunday morning. Blair, do you have something I've forgotten? On your clipboard, if you would just mark at the bottom there, it says, yes, I'm interested in water baptism. Then our offices will get in contact with you. So make sure you give us your phone number, your email, some way to contact you. If you're interested in water baptism, Mark it on that card, and then we'll be in touch with you this week to give you all of the details. And I just want to say a special thank you to my new friend, Deepa. This is her second time here, and she's at the altar, not just rededicating her life, but believing for her husband to start coming to church with her and her family again. And then right next to her is a young man named Chek, 11 years old, here with his family today who decided to dedicate his life to the Lord. We're so proud of you, all of you, 
here at the altar and at home. Remember to drop a one in the comments. If you want to receive salvation today, it is available to you. The anointing is no respecter of persons and it is not separated by a screen. So just drop a number one in the comments. Those of you that are interacting in the comments, go and like it, like it, like it. Let them know that they are making the greatest decision that they could ever make today. Amen. Well, pray them out. Lord God, we thank you for this time that we have spent communing with you. We thank you for all of these new souls that are going to be populating heaven. We thank you that you, like Jabez, God, bless us indeed. Increase the borders of our habitation, strengthen our stakes, and lengthen our cords, and bring us back together next time even more on fire for you. We thank you for it and bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget, we got lots of cool stuff going on in the foyers for you, for your families, free gifts for you to take home, treats for you to take home. And don't forget to get your kiddos. You'll be picking them up first through fifth grade right out these doors, our south entrance and down the hall of faith in our ministry activity center is where you'll be picking up those junior church kiddos. We'll see you Wednesday night. Sowing into the kingdom of God has never been easier or more secure than with smart giving. Any smartphone will work to use your smart giving, open your text messaging app, and send a message to number 45777. In the message of your text, type the amount of your gift, space WHC. If it's your first time giving, you'll receive a secure link to set up your account. Select your home campus, enter your giving method, and where you would like to receive your instant giving receipt. If you already registered, the process is the same. Just send a text message to 45777. Type the amount of your gift, space WHC. You'll receive your receipt immediately. If you prefer, you can also sew online at whc.life or by phone or mail. Just call the number on your screen or send your gift to the address displayed.
sin and clothed in death, mercy was my plea. And love compelled the heart of God to send grace down to me. Lost in sin, a wretched soul, desperate to be free. Oh, precious one, God's holy son, grace went to Calvary. Ah, grace, ah, grace, powerful grace, grace that restores and rescues me. Grace, powerful grace, I sing the song of the reed. 